I've said before that movies do not have to be pretty. A good movie does not have to be pleasant to look at. Ugliness, shocking imagery, they can be part of a powerful movie. But if you're going to present shocking and ugly images, or even ideas, they have to be in service of something. They have to have a point to them. They can't just be, look at all this horrible and disturbing stuff. Poor Things is a movie that uses ugliness and unpleasantness to a great effect. Welcome to A Draft House Diary for Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024, when I went out to the Alamo at Sloan's Lake to see Poor Things. This is a movie that has a very clear vision, but it's a hard vision to describe, a hard vision to really talk about. And when I talk about the fact that it has so much unpleasantness in its ideas and in its imagery, it also has to be acknowledged that they were all exquisitely created and crafted and rendered. The production design of this movie is, is remarkable and beautiful, and then it's distorted by strange angles and camera lens techniques and, and vignette techniques where we're seeing the world through a tiny aperture, a tiny round image, which distances us from what's happening and at the same time forces us to focus on some specific thing on the screen, which is very likely to be something that's really horrible and disturbing. And all of this is in the service of a story that is it's a very human story. It's a story about a person learning to be a person under very unique circumstances, because the character we're talking about, the character played by Emma Stone, is a person who exists thanks to what could be taken as either a bizarre and brutal experiment or an innovative life-saving procedure we are presented with these different takes on what this character has been through and what made her who and what she is uh, throughout the movie. Uh, Emma Stone's performance uh, shows tremendous range. The first part of the movie, I thought, oh, this is going to be another parlor trick movie where she's just playing somebody with overwhelming quirks. But no, this is a character that changes so much through this movie that it requires tremendous range and tremendous control to show us all the different aspects of this person while still making it a single coherent character, and she achieves that. Willem Dafoe also, as her creator, father, guardian, the, the medical doctor who's behind all of this, there, again, a performance with a great deal of range. We think we understand this character. We think we know how we can judge him, and we see more from the script and more from this performance. The other performances in this movie, including ones by uh, Mark Ruffalo and uh, Rami Youssef, they're good. They are solid. They don't have the range and depth of Emma Stone's performance or Willem Dafoe's performance just because the characters are more caricature. And this is a story that needed caricature because it is very much told in a fable kind of way. It is a strange uh, turn of the last century sort of fairy tale. So I don't want to say too much more about this movie because it is a movie that has to be discovered as you watch it. But I found it far more interesting than I expected to, even while I found parts of it repulsive. Other parts of my trip to the Alamo. The pre-show was very much crafted for this movie, in addition to trailers for Frankenstein movies and a trailer for The Island of Lost Souls, which turns out to be quite relevant as well. It also had a featurette about Emma Stone. Well, they, the featurette said that Emma stands for Expert Master of Movement Arts. It was about her ability in dance and physical comedy, mostly dance, but all of that was extremely relevant to this role that she had to play in Poor Things. Also had another featurette, an appreciation of Willem Dafoe and I've seen a lot of his stuff, and even I did not realize 
how many movies he has been in, how prolific he is as a character actor, and what his range is in supporting roles to really powerful leading performances. So the pre-show was, was really interesting in its own right, and a good preparation for seeing uh, poor things. The food and drink, I got the mozzarella sticks and a salad. Not a bad combination, not too heavy, but still interesting and fun with the mozzarella sticks. And those are both things that the Alamos tend to do very well. So I enjoyed that. The theater and the staff, they were great. The The staff at Sloan's Lake, I always find particularly helpful and uh, and efi efficient and polite. And uh, they, uh, they add to the experience and this was no exception. I'm still hoping for a renovation of that Sloan's Lake Theater because it could use some new seats and other upgrades. But in the meantime, it's still a fine theater. Thank you very much for joining me for this Draft House Diary. If you enjoyed this, please click that like button down below. And if you are interested in a review of a movie that also uses ugliness but doesn't do so very effectively, check out this review of The Ugly Spectacle of Babylon. I'll be back soon with another Draft House Diary. In the meantime, enjoy your movies, and when you do, stay till the end of the credits.